Uh, well, Aaron, you've got, uh, uh, you've got a nice bunch of clocks behind you, and so does Mark. Uh, and Jeff has, uh, has uh, a couple behind him. I just got uh, a couple of cuckoos behind me, and, uh, and the rest of it's a mess. <laughs> Yeah, I got quite a few. I got about a hundred. I got about a hundred. Gracious. That's a lot. That's that was just in my basement. Just in my basement. So, uh, yeah. A lot of my other stuff's upstairs. Wow. 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 But, uh, nice. You know, I really only started collecting about five years ago. Five years ago. And mostly, and mostly stores. Big stores. And auctions. You know, I'm trying to get him as cheap as I can, so. It works out. You just gotta click on Facebook Marketplace, surrounding area, surrounding area. Yeah, what I would do is I would sell like 10 clocks and buy one, or sell five and buy one, or whatever, and work my way up to my existing collection, which is about 130 clocks. But I'm at the point now, by buying and selling so much during the time, I, I, I collected what I want. And what I wanted to start out with was uh, Ithaca double dial calendar clocks. And I've had uh, 48 at one time. I've got probably 25 left. But I got all, all the big wall regulators and, and a lot of the shelf clocks. But I also like eight bell bracket clocks. I've got some of those. I got a handful of E. Howard clocks. I like the old Ace of Munger clocks, especially the ones that were done with uh, prison labor. I got Acorn clocks. I got Timby Solar clocks. I just got a whole bunch of it. It's, it's just now it's what I, what I like I'll buy if I can afford it. But I've repaired clocks forever. And Yeah, I know I Ron clocks. told me that you were extremely good at repairing clocks, and he suggested... To me, that uh, I add you as a uh, as the uh, expert in the group, and uh, because you know what you're doing. Well, I've been doing it long enough, I guess. By the looks of me, I might be the oldest guy on here. I don't know, but that's okay. I used to be the kid in the group, but not anymore. I, I, <laughs> I have a five a five digit NAWCC number, and I think they're up to about seven or eight digits now. So that tells you. But anyway, I, mostly now I just tinker with my own clocks. I do watch Marketplace and the, the local estate sales. But most of the clocks that I get to keep for my collection comes out of private collections. And uh, then I'm going to Mesquite Regional here in uh, next, well, in March, which is one of the top three regionals in the nation. And then I go to the Houston one. I haven't ventured out of state except years ago I went to the New Orleans uh, National. But I find enough clocks around here and interesting clocks that I don't have, usually have to travel too far. A couple hundred miles is uh, probably about as far as I go to pick up a clock. I don't like when I sell a clock. I don't like uh, I don't like shipping them. I won't pack them and ship them anymore because there's always something comes up and i'll tell you what when i pack a clock it looks like a mummy and it's packed good but something will go wrong down the line and then so all i do if i sell a clock i tell the person i will take it to wherever you want me to take it and then you deal with the shipping and i've had pretty good luck i sell most of my clocks off of the clock sites that we're on so anyway that's enough about me i guess Okay, well, uh, thanks for that information, and uh, uh, it's great to uh, put a face to a name, and uh, and uh, and and hear a little about hear a little bit about a person. Um, I do want to introduce uh, Steve Fowler next. Steve, uh, can you yeah. go ahead and uh, explain to people what you do? Um, um, part time for a living. Uh, can you hear me okay? I can. Yeah, I can. Um, well, I'll, I'll go back about 50 years. Um, I started wood carving uh, back when I was just a snot nosed kid. Back in, I guess, 69, I was uh, in eighth grade. Um, 65 now, so I've been carving for wood for more than 50 years. Um, 
my profession um, has kind of changed over the past few years, but uh, I originally started out as an art teacher, taught not too far from you, Mark, over there at Alton, Missouri, and then uh, migrated over to where you're at now, over at Donovan, lived there for almost 20 years, taught school there in Donovan, uh, Lone Star, and also uh, right there at the middle school in Donovan. Um, then I moved back up here to the Springfield area and was teaching school up here. Um, and uh, I've lived here south of Springfield, just about eight minutes away from, uh, from Ron, Rosencrantz. And the way I got involved in this group, um, Ron had a big old grandfather clock that he was wanting to sell. And, and I thought, man, 60 bucks, can't beat that. Because uh, I've got uh, <laughs> an old grandfather clock myself, and, and it needed some weights. And I knew it'd be 100 bucks if I were to go out and buy brand new weights. And I thought, I'll just go ahead and, uh, and buy that clock. And, put those weights in my clock, because there's one my dad had made. My dad was a certified uh, horologist, went to watchmaking school. He could take them apart, he could build them. Um, so I've always been around clocks. I'm not a collector. Um, and in the past, I guess, few years, I've been a building contractor. Um, stopped teaching, I guess my last year was in 16. And, but I've been still involved in building things. And, and uh, but when I met Ron, he said, you know, there's a, probably a pretty big need for people who know how to work with wood. And uh, so it, he has hooked me up with different people and, and through this, through Mark's uh, site, I've actually sold a couple of uh, antlers and things like that. and. And I've done some repair work for um, Ron. And he's had several things that people have brought to him that he really wouldn't know what to do with. And so I said, yeah, I can do that. And, uh, and I've got a, just a couple here. Um, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that now. Yeah. This is a, uh, a set of wooden antlers. And yes, they are wooden. In fact, this came out of a piece of uh, flooring, hickory flooring, and I leave it all intact like that. That's beautiful. And I try to get as detailed as possible, um, and also having this chunk of wood on here, I can still manipulate it. This is hickory. Believe me, I'm putting actually a lot of... Right. On that. Yeah, I see if that. If that was wind and wood, it would have snapped when I was sanding it. But hickory is extremely durable. You can bend that, and you're you're going to have trouble breaking hickory. Um, here's a uh, a pendulum I made. This is uh, from maple. That is beautiful, also. And, uh, I've got one for you know I'm. Don't want to offend anybody, but most cuckoo clocks have really lame carving, to be quite honest. <laughs> it's factory made, and you can tell. Um, and I like to make things look very detailed, uh, such as what you might see carved back in the 1880s, 1890s. But I've had a lot of people look at my carvings and say, you're doing stuff like I haven't seen since I've been in Europe. Um, I think Mark has even commented about that. Um, I've got a clock up here that some of you may have already seen some of my details. Let me get it down. Um, I've got the antlers out right now. Wow, but, that's uh, pretty. So you can see what what we did. Uh, Ron and I actually went in cahoots on this because uh, he's, of course, the technical guy. He's going to get a clock up and running. And uh, I told him to tell you what, why don't we go in cahoots on a uh, experimental project? 
And um, so he supplied the clock, and we took all the woodwork off of it. And I went ahead and made all of this. Most of this is maple, so it's pretty tough wood. Hey Steve, is uh, that the one that you made uh, the where, where it had a plastic cuckoo door, and you, uh, per William uh, uh, Thompson's request, you made a wooden cuckoo door uh, frame? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, funny you should mention that door. Um, there's that plastic door. Right, right. <laughs> it even has some of the glue that was on in there. Right. Pulled off some of the mirror. Uh, but that's that old plastic door. But yeah, I went ahead and. Uh, that's the yeah, e, e. Schmeckenbecker clock, if I believe. Am I right, um, Ron? Yes. Yes, it was. Yeah. It's yep. an eight day. Yeah, it's a beautiful and clock, and you did a you did a heck of a job on that. And oh, I, I, I would just want everybody who is here to see what kind of work he does. In case you have a clock uh, that needs some uh, woodwork done to it, uh, you can uh, uh, hire Steve uh, to uh, to to help you out. Um, and uh, Steve, I know you and I talked about uh, a pricing on uh, uh, some of your clocks. What would you charge to um, to make a topper or, or uh, make antlers or something like that? Um, if I were to make a topper like this, and as you can see, it's pretty stock. Right. It's not a lot of detail. This is what I was referring to earlier. You know, again, I if it was mine, I would go a lot fancier than this. But I know that most of these clocks come from factories, and and they don't have the time to put in a lot of detail. Right. Um, so but this is what you see. And if you look carefully on this, this is one that Ron sent me. It had a broken tip on it. Yeah. Um, and so what I did on that is um, went ahead and did a repair on it. Um, the work that I'm doing for Ron is dirt cheap. <laughs> I will tell you that right up front. Well, I, I, um, I know you and Ron have got a friend's pricing. Yeah. I don't want yeah, to know your not. friend's pricing. I want to know what you would charge a normal okay. person. To, to repair something like that? A, uh, a topper, for example, like this, without a lot of detail, um, I'm just guessing off the top of my head, probably 80 bucks. Okay. But if I were to do a topper like this, probably three times that amount. Okay. There's, there's just a huge difference. Well, you know, uh, there there's a lot of people that would pay that price because, you know, a lot of the antique cuckoo clocks that we're getting cheap on Goodwill or on Marketplace, their their wood is destroyed. The toppers are missing. Yeah, and so uh, right. for people who collect stuff like myself, um, they want to have close to original toppers back on their box. And so right. if they can afford it, the, I'm sure they'll hire you. And uh, and again, I would like for you to uh, post on the group some examples and some prices that you would charge people. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm trying to help you out here, Steve. And... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, and I, and I know Ron praises your work. And so... Ron's a top quality guy. He's a good guy. I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll brag on him. Because uh, he does it too. So much more enough. And Steve, uh, I, I thank you for uh, introducing yourself. And uh, um, I, 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 I asked as far as carving goes... 
I asked Justin Barron to be here, but he's working, and he told me that he has a local meeting next week where he's going to uh, show people how he carves bone hands. Justin mm -hmm. carves bone hands for people, and so he, from that meeting, that local chapter meeting, he's going to post a video to the group page um, of him carving bone hands. So he's another person that I'm trying people to uh, to uh, contact. I know um, Rob Stone is one that introduced or who praised uh, Justin because. Uh, Rob Stone hired him to uh, carve some hands for his um, his uh, Herbert Her antique cuckoo clock. So, yeah. um, and the next person I would like to introduce, who I consider an expert, is Ron Rosencrantz. Ron. Yes. Ron and I video chat almost every night. He is a very good guy. I consider him an expert. He's a disabled person who was in the uh, carpentry um, business from building houses to roofing houses. He also used to uh, cut glass for a, work for a glass company for a while. Um, I, I'm trying to talk Ron into um, doing a video uh, showing how to cut glass because I tried cutting glass in the past and I, excuse my French, suck at it. And uh, so I'm trying to get Ron to uh, post a video, but I got to get Ron to break out of his uh, shell first. Uh, so, uh, Ron. Uh, buys and uh, works on clocks and he'll sometimes uh, send clocks off to uh, 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 other people to uh, do bushings and uh, bushing work and work that he don't feel like doing but he knows how to do um, to uh, friends of his and he'll send uh, 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 case repair to Steve and so uh, he buys and sells clocks, and he has a uh, he. Him and I talked and uh, video chatted, and he thinks he's got like 200, 250 clocks. I think he's exaggerating. He's got close to 500 clocks in his house, and uh, um, he uh, he wants to uh, work on his own clocks but because people find out about people working on clocks he'll get new customers all the time because he worked on a cuckoo clock or he worked on a clock and then uh, people or he'll sell a clock and then people find out that he's working on clocks so he's getting new customers all the time so I consider Ron an expert in the group, even though he says otherwise, uh, he he is too modest of a person. And so anytime by word of mouth gets out that you're working on clocks and selling clocks and working on clocks, he's not advertising nowhere, but he's getting new customers all the time. That tells you something about the person. That tells you something about the man or woman, and uh, uh, therefore I consider him an expert. So, Ron, tell us a little about yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, like you said, I was a carpenter most of my life, and uh, uh, then I became a glazer for a glass company. Did that for like fifteen years, and. A lot of health issues from working with my body all my life. Finally wore myself out and became disabled. And I started collecting clocks several years before I started repairing clocks. And I got a good friend and mentor, Glenn Sanders. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. It goes away and it'll come back. But uh, I'm a member of Chapter 57 out of uh, Carthage. 
uh, but back in 2014, Glenn Sanders, that was repairing clocks for me at the time, took me under his wing and said, I can tell you got a passion for clocks. Would you like to learn to repair them? And I said, what? Because I know how expensive it is to learn. If you go to the NAWCC or anywhere to be trained by someone, and he offered out of the goodness of his heart, he actually moved another desk in his shop beside his. And I got to watch and send him work, and he'd teach me and, and stuff. So we've done that for several years until I could get to a point where I could work on, on a lot of clocks on my own at home. Uh, there, like Glenn, like uh, Mark says, there's still certain clocks that I uh, don't work on. I, Glenn and I never got to a point to work on grandfather clocks, so I refer them to other members. And uh, French clocks, I usually refer back to Glenn, but uh, I do work on a lot. I, I tend to sell more cuckoo clocks than any other clock, so I tend to work on more cuckoo clocks than any other clock. And as a lot of people know that repair clocks, uh, they're very cantankerous. A lot of people will refuse to work on food and pop. And Mark Mutterland has helped me a lot on that. Glenn helped me a lot first, but there were some things that I was still having problems with on food and clock that Mark has kind of opened my eyes to and been very beneficial. And like he says, I have a lot of repeat customers. I, uh, Glenn taught me to not overcharge people. And I took on Glenn's uh, thing. And I do it more as, uh, you know, as people know on Social Security, you can't make it with the cost of medications and stuff. So I just kind of do it as a, a little side income to help the, the household, but also it supports my addiction to clocks. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I tend to buy a lot of clocks, and unfortunately I get attached to clocks as I'm working on them. And so I have a little bit of everything. Uh, I, I collect about any kind of clock, especially anything unusual. But I, I've never been able to afford the higher-end clocks like the double dial Ithacas and stuff like that. I admire them. But uh, the, the closest clock I've got to that I've been wanting for a while, I did get me a double weight. Uh, me and a regulator had a regional this year because the price of clocks had just come down so much that a lady was generous and, and discounted her clock. So I finally got me a good one of those. I've got Kinsels. I've got a lot of cuckoo clocks. I've got one that's about four foot tall. Uh, I've got Seth Thomas, uh, number two reproduction regulator, but this was uh, one of 4,000 made, and it was actually unused when I bought it. And, uh, but I'll quit rattling on myself, but oh, I, I do, I treat people right, like I want to be treated, and I use Amen, it. brother. I'll, I'll sell one clock to a person or repair one clock for them. And the next thing I know, they've bought 20 clocks or better from me. And they come over to pick up one clock I service for them and then realize I repair clocks. And then they'll remember they've got the grandparents' clocks in the closet that they need to get repaired. And it's hard for me to say no, but like Mark says and Steve knows, anybody's been to my house, I bought so many boxes of clocks at regionals that I cannot my time to work on it. So I keep trying to say no, and I've got my good friend Jim Banning's phone number uh, right next to my desk that he says you can refer people to him all day long if I want, so I do. I'm getting better at it, but my regular customers, it's hard to say no to them. And, uh, but I'm doing more and more of that because I have just got to, because I can't quit buying clocks. I bought another Gustav Becker clock say no to and so I gotta quit I, I, I'm not gonna quit buying I can't quit buying no and once I, you're bit I, by the antique bug you have to have your next fix and absolutely. you all know that <laughs> and I love people but I am a, an introvert believe it or not and uh, I like 
dealing with people one on one, and I don't like giving speeches and videos and stuff like that. But I'm considering the glass video, Mark. I'll, I'll I appreciate that, Ron. I appreciate that, <laughs> Ron. I appreciate you uh, talking here, and I know that you uh, have a. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, one of the fears of everybody, and I, Ron and I were talking about this earlier. I took a, a, some speech classes when I was in the military, and uh, um, I most people I've ever talked uh, through was about seventy-five to a hundred people at one time. So I'm not I'm not afraid to talk to people, and so. Um, Bob Ding is joining the room. Great. And I don't know what's going on with my computer, uh, but welcome, Bob. Bob. Bob, will you, uh, Bob, will you put your, uh, uh, microphone on mute, please. Bob. I'm sorry. I just lost half the screen on mine. Everybody got real small. Yeah, and I, um, yeah, uh, Bob, please put your microphone on mute. Bob's having some problems. Yeah. Let's uh, see if Bob will read my message and uh, comply. <laughs> Bob, thank you. Can everybody hear me now? Yeah. All right. Uh, Ron, thank you for the uh, introduction to yourself. Uh, I know uh, uh, um, speaking to people is uh, man and woman's most fear. So I appreciate that. I do have to tell this story about Ron. I went to the Versailles auction uh, last year and I have major back issues and so I had to leave the Versailles auction but there was two GK anti cuckoo clocks that I put silent bids on and I had to leave the auction and I had to drive straight to the VA because my back was hurting so I put silent bids on and uh, the auctioneers called me up saying I won at least one of the clocks. I was staying at my sister's in Columbia, so I drove 70 miles back to Versailles just to see the, uh, the guy that had the auction was leaving on his horse and buggy to go home. And he's like, I'm like, where's my clock? He's like, well, didn't the other guy call you? I'm like, no. He's like, you didn't win the clock. So one would think that I would be mad at Ron, but I'm not. I enjoy talking to him. And like I said, we video chat about every night. So uh, the next person I would like to introduce is Lars. Lars, wave your hand, please. Lars, uh, I will not get into this right now. Um, I had to create more moderators in the group, and when the time is right, I will explain why I chose more moderators in my group. I will not get into that right now, but when the time is right, I will explain it all. But Lars, please introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Um, so I got started with clocks um, about, I want to say it was three years ago, four years ago. 
Um, I had, I'd grown up in a house where we have um, a really gorgeous old 18th century bracket clock um, and, a, uh, and a nice uh, um, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch uh, long clock, long case clock uh, that, that I just grew up with. Uh, these were just kind of part of the, part of the household <laughs> stuff around the house. Um, and then we also had an old cuckoo clock that uh, my uncle, my great uncle had brought back from Germany uh, where he was involved in some service that we don't have good records for, but it, from what I've been able to discover, it looks like he was probably some sort of involved in some sort of espionage uh, in the 1930s in Germany. <laughs> um, and so we got a clock that he brought back from that. Um, and uh, as a kid, I loved that cuckoo clock. And in fact, I loved it to death. I pulled it off the wall and smashed it. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, so about three or four years ago, um, I've always kind of wanted another cuckoo clock, and uh, somebody had one up for sale on Facebook for $110 or something, and I was like, okay, I'll go grab it. I knew nothing about cuckoo clocks. I didn't even know how they made the noise. I had no idea. So I picked this thing up and discovered that the bellows are shot, of course, and uh, it's got all kinds of other issues. Um, and so I started looking at YouTube videos and learning how to fix it. And uh, uh, next thing I know, I've got I've got a working clock up on my wall. Um, and then my exchange student, who was from Germany, her mother came over, and she looked at the wall and she said, "That's a great clock. You've got room for a lot more clocks here on this wall." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my wife my wife was not amused, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, you know, it's it's uh, grown from there. Um, I now have I, I'm I'm a relatively uh, restrained collector at this point. Um, I've got um, one nice old uh, youngins uh, wall uh, wall clock. Uh, I've got uh, two grandfather clocks. One is a 1970s thing that, that uh, somebody was selling for for nothing, and so I picked that up. Um, and then I've also got a, a 1920s um, uh, bim bam. Uh, clock that, uh, uh, that again somebody was cleaning out uh, their neighbor's house who had died and, and wanted to know if I wanted this clock and, and you know, what would I offer for it and so I made a low ball offer for it because I didn't really have room for it and she accepted it so I'm like great now I've got, a, <laughs> I've got this clock uh, and I've got I've got a couple of uh, of mantle clocks um, and a couple of uh, torsion clocks um, and just just this week, uh, pick up a uh, an Ansonia um, open escapement uh, normal clock. Uh, Congratulations! My, my ex-wife, thank you, thank you. Uh, my ex-wife uh, had brought over her her grandmother's clock uh, and asked me to see if I could get it working, and it was an Ansonia, uh, probably 1890s, 1880s. Uh, open escapement, and I just fell in love with the thing, and of course I have to give it back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been looking for an open escapement for a couple of months now, and uh, um, when Mark uh, when Mark found this one on on Facebook uh, 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 Marketplace, I contacted the guy and he and asked him if he'd be willing to ship it, and he said, "No, I don't want to ship it. It, it weighs 50 pounds." And then Mark reached out to him and said. This guy 